Helping Seniors Television, all about improving quality of life for seniors. If you're a senior, know a senior, or plan to be a senior, then this show is for you. It's all about helping you develop your own aging plan so you can age actively and with dignity. Helping Seniors Television, from the Helping Seniors Network of information, education, and resources. I'm Kerry Fink and welcome to Helping Seniors Television. On behalf of our president and founder, Joe Steckler, and our entire Helping Seniors TV crew, thank you for joining us today. I think you're going to find our topic today uh, both useful, educational, and it could save your sight. And so uh, with that as sort of a backdrop, we're going to talk about a term that we hear a lot, but uh, as I was asking our expert uh, panelists, I'm not even sure I can define it correctly, so that's why we're going to ask the ex experts and get really the right insight into it. And so today we're so privileged to have from the Eye Clinic and Laser Institute the founder, who uh, Dr. Mukesh Agarwal. You actually created the uh, Eye Institute and uh, uh, the the Eye Clinic and Laser Institute in 1980. So yes. you've been here for quite a while with this. Yes, I have been. <laughs> it has been a big. Um achievement, you know, I feel, you know, I, when I came to this area, um, <clears throat> it, it was kind of like uh, there was no concept of outpatient surgery and all this. So I started a outpatient surgery center. I was the first one. And then I was the first one to start doing the laser vision correction in right. this area. And I was the first one to start doing uh, no stitch cataract surgery wow. at that time, you know. So there have been a lot of uh, advancements and recently for the last four or five years I've been doing laser cataract surgery, wow. which nobody else in the area does it. So I mean we have done a lot of innovative things in this area, brought a lot of technology, you know, that's technology along with the very compassionate care. Yeah, well, and that is so important. And our other panel expert is Dr. Kyle Calloway, who is also with Eye Clinic and Laser Institute. And uh, the topic that we're talking, welcome, Dr. Kyle. Thank you. So it, the topic that I wanted to ask you guys about today is about glaucoma. And I've heard this term like all along. I've always heard, you know, we're testing, we want to know what's going on about glaucoma. But I was making the comment before the cameras were rolling, I don't know that I could tell you what glaucoma is other than it's something that we want to be aware of and, and understand it could cause problems with our sight. Mm -hmm. So maybe I yeah. wanted to ask you first to give us a little a primer on it, if you will. Sure. Do you want me to go first? You yeah. may start? Yeah. Okay. So at the end of the day, glaucoma is really damage to the optic nerves, what it comes down to. Um, as it progresses, it turns into visual field loss that associates with that damage of the nerve. Um, when we treat it, what we're going after is the biggest factor, which is pressure inside the eye. And there's other factors that go into it, but that's the one that's the treatable portion of it. Reduce the pressure, reduce the compression, and then hopefully freeze the nerve where it's at so it doesn't continue to lose tissue, which then per, you know, decreases the, the progression of vision loss associated with that. So really it's damage to the nerve associated with damage to our visual field from that. Now, is that related to when you go to the eye doctor and they do that puff of air thing and mm -hmm. they're trying to, and it's very uncomfortable, but I guess it has an important purpose, right? <laughs> yes, mm -hmm. uh, that was a old technology, the puff of air, but nowadays for the last 20, 30 years, we don't use it a whole lot. We wow. use a Goldman tonometer, which is more accurate and uh, more reliable. You know? And so the key is, though, you're checking the pressure, pressure to yeah. see where somebody is on that mm -hmm. scale. Yes. And I guess that's one of the reasons why it is very important to mm -hmm. get an eye exam on a regular basis, correct? Mm -hmm. it's, it's basically a, a silent killer of the eyesight. Wow. You know, a lot of people have glaucoma, but they don't know about it. So basically, the eye exam with the pressure check is the only diagnostic way. Most of the time when the, di the glaucoma gets advanced, people say, well, doctor, I'm going on the highway, I'm seeing good, but I missed the exits. So that's very advanced because the field of vision is so decreased 
that they cannot see the sides, they miss the exits. Oh. But that's very advanced because most of the time the open angle glaucoma, which is the common type of glaucoma, does not cause any symptoms unless it's very advanced. So one of the, I guess that, that leads to another question. So, you know, when you go down to the uh, driver's license bureau and they have you look at the numbers, they also flash a little light in from, from you know, to say, tell me if you see a light and which side yes. and all that. Is that... Is that field, the, field of vision. Wow. They're trying to make sure your field of vision is pretty intact. So I would imagine, and I've heard a lot, but what... Are there things that people, uh, that are common factors with people who get glaucoma? Are there like certain things that you say, well, that could be an indication or does it just hit all of us? Well, it can hit anybody and everybody, but sometimes it's familial. It, it runs in certain families and certain demographics, uh, the people with brown eyes huh. are a little more susceptible to it. Wow. And patients who are taking certain medications like steroids and all this can be a little more susceptible to it. So number one, this is a real good reminder mm -hmm. that you need to have your eyes checked on a regular basis. basis. Mm -hmm. And exactly. probably by somebody who really understands that. They're not mm -hmm. just there to write a prescription, but mm -hmm. they're there to help make sure everything is going the right exactly. way with your vision. Mm -hmm. So if we talk about this a little bit, uh, I think we sort of answered this question that we'd written down, but why don't we know if we have it? So I guess it would be a surprise to us maybe if, we, if it was early on. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Some people, when they first come in, they're asking about mm -hmm. it not because they're noticing in vision, but they have a family history. And as Dr. Agarwal mentioned, it's highly genetic. Mm -hmm. So if your mother, your father, somebody direct bloodline has it, there's a higher risk for it. Doesn't mean you're gonna have it, but it means there's higher potential for it. So you should be screening for it. Um, but again, usually by the time they're actually noticing the visual field loss, it's fairly severe. You can't reverse the damage that's done. You can only try and stop it from progressing worse. Right. And so that probably is a question then, if you're gonna be serious about it, and we just talked about maybe a puff test is an outdated way to look mm -hmm. at it. What are some ways that you would test somebody and say, let's see what's going on here? Well, you know, in the routine exam, the pressure is checked. Mm -hmm. You know, we always check, and if they look like the pressure's above normal, we do a little more detailed testing. Mm -hmm. um, usually the pressure in the eye runs between 12 and 18 millimeters of mercury. Mm -hmm. If the pressure in the higher, eight, I mean, group, like, 18, 20, or higher, we do a little more detailed testing like visual fields, this and that. And if there are any changes, then we follow these patients and decide whether we want to treat or, or leave them alone if they mm -hmm. just borderline. Yeah, and I guess that's a question that we always want to know about medical conditions. Is there, is there an advantage to, to discovering that you've got an issue earlier on? So does it make a difference in terms of how you would help somebody if they discovered that they may be, uh, may be fighting that? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So it's always harder to kind of catch back up. Mm -hmm. It's easier to get on top of it when it first happens and try and stop it from that point or at least reduce it. Um, specifically with glaucoma, um, Oh, sorry. Hold on. I, I forgot my train of thought here. Okay. Um. <laughs> well, okay. So, so well. Let me let me let me let me take it back up from from the question side yeah. of saying to you. So, so is it a good idea to try to? Is it is it beneficial? Is maybe the right way to ask the question to understand if you might be battling this condition earlier? Does it give you more options, or how do you look at it? Well, basically, as I said, you know, <clears throat> usually most of the times. It starts in people 40 and above. Mm -hmm. It doesn't, you know, uh, preclude sometimes children are born with mm -hmm. glaucoma, mm -hmm. congenital glaucoma. Uh, those are different conditions, you know, mm -hmm. basically. But usually in people 40 and above, they're more susceptible, you mm -hmm. know. Um, basically, to be honest, you know, in layman's terminology, 
how I would explain to a person is, is like you buy a new house, kitchen mm-hmm. sink works. Right. Over the time, it clogs up. Mm-hmm. So the clogging of the drain is glaucoma, okay. where the sink overflowing. Uh-huh. And our treatments also, I, I usually explain to the patients, is basically the same mm-hmm. as you deal with a sink overflowing. Mm-hmm. First, we use the drops, which is like liquid plumber or Drano. Okay. And then we do the laser, which is like the rotor router. Okay. We shine the light in the drain, break up the debris so it flushes out. Okay. And then the last resort, if the rotor router doesn't work, you create a new drain, which is the surgery. Wow. You create a new drain in the eye. Uh, there are a lot of different techniques we do to control the glaucoma, whether it's creating a new drain or putting a shunt uh, or do some procedures to open up the channels inside surgically. So the first takeaway that I get from what you're describing is that even if you found that you uh, may be suffering from a glaucoma, that there is hope. There are things that you can do to treat this. Oh, definitely, definitely. There are a lot of things, you know, Basically, in glaucoma, it's like the early detection, early treatment, and keeping it controlled, Mm -hmm. a regular follow-up. If you have glaucoma, the biggest thing is if you are on drops, make sure you stay with it and follow it and keep the pressure down. It's like anything like diabetes or high blood pressure. Mm You can have it, once you have it, you're probably going to have it all your life. Mm -hmm. So basically the thing is, make sure you keep the pressure controlled, Mm -hmm. whether it's with medication or laser or whatever, you know, so so you're out of trouble. Yeah, and what you're describing is there's a whole series of of therapies that you might be able to deploy. So somebody shouldn't be afraid of figuring out where they stand with this now exactly, either. Exactly, exactly. Mm-hmm. In this day and age, you know, basically it, it's very easy to treat and uh, um, the treatments are available and I mean, it's very, most of the time it's just the drops or something, you know, or laser, which is totally non-invasive type thing, you know. Right. And then the flip side of that is if you ignore it, it's certainly not going to go away. In fact, then it gets really bad, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. Yes, it does. It, it can damage your side visions, you know, central vision. It, it's just pretty detrimental to the eyes. So in this day and age, what is the uh, prescription for how often you would say somebody who thinks that they have healthy eyes you know, just maybe needs, you know, they think they just need a new eyeglass prescription or something. How often do you recommend people come in to Eye Clinic and Laser Institute and, mm-hmm. and get, you know, get an updated exam? So generally over the age of 40 to 50, we recommend mm-hmm. just every one year. Uh-huh. And that's because when you hit that age, you start to have an increased risk for things like glaucoma, mm-hmm. as far as other conditions. Um, when we get into our teens, generally recommendation is one to two years is good. We prefer that, but really anywhere from two to four years mm-hmm. without problems. Now with changes, come back sooner. Um, even 20s into 40s, you recommend at least every two years at minimum. And it does seem like one of the advantages to making an appointment with uh, Eye Clinic and Laser Institute is not only are you going to be able to get the eye exam and get your new eyeglass prescription and your contact lenses or whatever you or maybe even take a look at laser surgery Mm -hmm. as a way to not have to do all that Mm -hmm. but it but it seems like also if you get established and you're not running from doctor to doctor you're also going to have a baseline so you can see if somebody what's happening over time with somebody's uh, vision as well, right? Oh, definitely. Yeah. It, it gets a lot more challenging when somebody's jumping from doctor to doctor, different practices specifically, uh-huh. not necessarily within practice. The reason I say that with glaucoma specifically is it's nice to know where they start, their treatment pattern, which we have mapped out in all of their um, previous exams, mm-hmm. and then kind of where things are going as far and as well as the testing. So when you have somebody that's new that comes in, 
the first question is, okay, where do we think this person started? Mm -hmm. You don't necessarily want to bring them off therapy to recheck it. You can, and sometimes we do that, but you're left playing a little bit of guesswork. That doesn't mean that you're not going to be able to treat it correctly, mm -hmm. but it does make it a little more challenging from our standpoint. Because then you're left going, we know we're here today. That could be an acceptable pressure, but what happens if at your other doctor's office it was actually at a lower pressure? We don't know that. You can't tell what the trend Correct. looks like. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Even with all the testing. So we go year to year, and every year we track it, and we're looking mm -hmm. for those those changes. If we don't have testing, or we have testing, but the, the other office had a different machine, we can't directly correlate them. You can you can take some mm -hmm. correlation, but not completely. You know, one for one, two for two. Um, now we we always request records. So I mean, with that said, we're still getting a big bulk of it, but. It, it just makes it a little bit more challenging. So if you're somebody who jumps doctor to doctor every couple of years, it's going to be a lot harder to keep it under control as opposed to sticking with one person from start to finish who knows mm -hmm. you, knows your eyes, knows where you've been, what you've done. Well, and that, to me, that's one of the things that speaks, uh, speaks highly for what uh, Eye Clinic and Laser Institute is all about. I mean, you've been here on the Space Coast. We were talking before the camera's rolling. Since 1980, that's not insignificant. Like you said, you've seen yeah. so many, you've seen so many advances, and and staying on yes. top of the advances. You just were telling us at the open of the show that you're you're moving into areas because of your expertise in the laser surgery that are creating breakthroughs for for treatment all the time. Yes, they are. You know, right from <clears throat> um, the start of the lasers for glaucoma to outpatient surgery to laser vision correction, laser cataract mm -hmm. surgery. I mean, the, the changes have been tremendous. The invent of the OCT, ocular coherent tomography, has changed the whole field of ophthalmology. Okay, I you mean, just used a word that went <laughs> right over. Yeah, can well, these are uh, technologies that we use to assess the retina, the optic nerve, uh -huh. you know, these are very latest and greatest technologies right. within the last eight to ten years, you know. So, I mean, it has made our job a whole lot easier and very precise. And it's easier to diagnose certain conditions because of this technology. I mean, it's just like uh, if a person, you know, looks at what we were doing in 1980s and, you know, earlier, and look at what we're doing today, you say, my God, what, <laughs> <laughs> what a change, you know, in, in 30, 40 years, you know, it's like we have taken a step ahead like two or three centuries, you know. Yeah. Well, that's always one of the things that's fascinating for me from sitting on the helping seniors uh, side of the equation as I get to talk to uh, uh, the organizations and businesses that take care of our seniors. It really makes it kind of an exciting time to be alive because um, the advances in the technology mean things that you couldn't do a few years ago uh, are now either treatable or uh, I was having this conversation with, uh, with somebody we were talking about that now uh, somebody who's at retirement age literally uh, actuarially gets like another 45 years. So everything that we can do that preserves our sight and helps us in that direction just gives us that much more uh, time to enjoy all the things around us. And I wanted to ask you about that it was maybe to give, uh, you know, so, so if I follow correctly, somebody can call you and say, listen, I just, I haven't had my eyes checked in a while. I probably might need new glasses. Is that a perfectly fine way to start or? That's, that's it. Mm -hmm. excellent, you know. Yeah. Have a routine exam and, you know, if we find anything abnormal, we just discuss it and bring it to their attention, you know, mm -hmm. and really. Now, the only caveat to that I bring about because I think it's important for the Medicare holders mm -hmm. is going to be HMOs versus PPOs, your different insurance types. Mm -hmm. Some of them do require um, a referral from their primary care doctor. Mm -hmm. Not mm -hmm. all of them do, but when they call us, we usually try and go through that with them. Sure. If that's the case, we just tell them, look, you got to talk with the other doctor first. All they have to do is send us a referral form, then we can see you. And then you're good. But to go. if you come see us first, we'll have to say, 
hold on, put on the brakes. You don't want to pay out of pocket, which right. will happen if, if we don't get the insurance covered. So just a quick little caveat. And that's good to know because you guys are literally all throughout Brevard County mm -hmm. too. I, I was, we were talking about that. You have four different locations. Yes. So really almost from any place in Brevard County, uh, it's not hard to find you. Tell us where, where your locations are. So our two most southern locations, we're going to be um, on Wickham Street for both of the Melbourne mm -hmm. offices. So there's Melbourne, and then there's north of there in the mm -hmm. Suntree Vieira location. Okay. And then we have the Merritt Island, which is our surgical practice, our largest practice. Mm -hmm. And then we have the Port St. John, which is one of the newest practices that we have. Mm -hmm. um, right up there, kind of getting towards Titusville yeah. into MIMS. So it's very convenient to be able to find you, number one. Mm -hmm. And number two, you're getting uh, help from real experts and it sounds like you guys are able to to help in a lot of different a, a lot of different areas and in fact I was going to talk about I was going to get ask you to talk a little bit about that so you know when people pr come in and say listen I've got to have an eye checkup I imagine they have a lot more options than they used to do it used to be like well pick out start picking out your glasses but now you probably have a whole whole range of things mm -hmm. that folks can consider no absolutely oh, definitely, definitely. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> Now it's not about the eyeglasses these days as it is about the medical exam, you know, mm -hmm. that um, checking if the person has dry eyes, mm -hmm. if they have glaucoma, if they have any corneal disease, um, if they have any cataracts, mm -hmm. if they have any changes associated with medical problems like mm -hmm. uh, diabetes, high blood pressure or they have any other systemic side effects due to the medications they're mm -hmm. taking, you know. So there are a lot of things, you know, these days to consider, you know. Yeah. In the eye exam, it's not just the glasses or you know, <laughs> simple things, you know. There are a lot of diabetics these days who, you know, kind of like never realize that the the eyes can be affected by the diabetes, you know. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, that's another thing, and the patients who have hypertension, patients who are taking a lot of medications for asthma or water pills, their eyes can be very dry. This is wow. one of the most common thing in in day to day that we see the dry eyes. You know, there are about 30 to 50 million people in this country who are suffering from dry eyes. You know, wow. and these are very important things. You know, they affect your day-to-day -day life, you know, basically. Yeah, I imagine one of the most difficult things would be in the example you described earlier when we were talking specifically about glaucoma, uh, this concept of not being able to, you're kind of losing your peripheral vision mm -hmm. because you've, your glaucoma is advanced. And yet what we're talking about today is there's so many options for treatment and ways to go at this that you really shouldn't be afraid to 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 jump in and and start solving you know start solving it exactly it, you know it's just the the best thing is diagnosis and and treatment and follow up that's basically it now it's good advice so again how would people get in touch with eye clinic and laser institute and get the process started is there a phone number they would call a website what would you well, they, they could go on our website, youreyeclinic.com, or they can call our central number, 321-453-3937. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. You know, that office itself can direct, uh, they, they, all they have to do is which office they want to go to, and we could direct them and make an appointment right from our central office. That's very good. So in kind of recapping, so our topic for today, folks, is glaucoma. And what we've talked about is the fact that this is something that you will get uh, tested for, right, when you come in for re your regular exam. We've talked about that if you haven't had an exam within the past year, it makes good sense because uh, as we're learning, it's not just about getting a prescription for a pair of glasses. It is, in fact, as we get older, making sure our eyes are in good shape. Mm -hmm. One of the most important things these days, you know, um, which is very new, <clears throat> I just want to bring it up. Yes. Uh, these days, you know, we treat the patients who are recently diagnosed with glaucoma or who are already on medications. 
The, the biggest problem we face with the seniors these days because of the arthritis or their uh, dexterity, they cannot use their drops mm -hmm. or they miss the drops. And the drops, some of these drops are very costly. Mm -hmm. They can be anywhere from 50 to $100 a month, wow. which is very hard to sure. um, afford sometimes. So what they have recently been working a lot of di different things, as I said, um, the laser treatment and all this. Um, they have come out with a new thing, Durista, mm -hmm. which is a small implant. It's like one-tenth the size of a rice, wow. grain of <laughs> rice. And we could just, in a minute, inject into the eye, and it can last anywhere from four months to two years wow. without using the drops. So wow. it solves a lot of problems, and this thing is covered by the Medicare and the supplement, and I'm sure once it is covered by the Medicare and the supplement insurance, the other insurances will follow. Yes. So it, it's a big, big thing, you know, I mean, and uh, it, it's not like a big breakthrough in, in, because the problem with these drops, not only the dexterity and difficulty in pu putting the drops, but Sometimes patients are non-compliant. They, they have so many things. Sure. They have so many medications to take. They forget it. And sometimes, you know, they run out of the medication, and the insurance says, no, you, you got it three weeks ago. <laughs> right. We won't give it to you till four weeks. So it's, it's kind of like a, a circus, you know, that yeah. goes on. Well, this is one more example of how uh, the technology keeps moving along. It's another reason why you want to make your appointment with Eye Clinic and Laser Institute, and let's check your eye's health. So thank you both of you for joining us on today on this important topic of glaucoma. And I'm Kerry Fink on behalf of Helping Seniors TV. Thanks for joining us. I'm Joe Stackler. Thank you for joining our program today. I'd like to remind you that our senior information line is available to you at 321-473-7770. There you can get help and direction that could be helpful for your specific situation or circumstances. The work of helping seniors is very important, but we can't do it alone. That is why our sponsors here in Brevard County are so important. I'd like to thank our many area sponsors, businesses and medical providers who support the mission of helping seniors that help us carry the cost of our media efforts. If you'd like to join us either as a business partner or simply donate as an individual, we would welcome your call at 321-473-7770. You're always welcome to visit our website at www.helpingseniorsofbrevard.org. Thanks so much for your help. It does make a difference.